In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. What happens if you expose your skin without protection to sunlight? You get burned, right? Which is not funny. What happens if you expose your lungs to nicotine? What happens is they shrink and stop functioning properly. What happens if you expose your eyes to screens with no protection? One of the problems could be retinal damage. And what happens if you expose your heart to bad love, to fake love? Well, what happens then is that you get your heart burnt, drunk, damaged, so that your heart cannot love anymore. And if you cannot love anymore, tell me, how can you be happy? Welcome everybody to this meditation on purity of heart. What's purity of heart? Purity of heart is about attaching our heart to a real good, to a real love, not to a fake one. And it is difficult to live according to this in our culture, right? Because our culture screams at us over and over again that whoever does not give free rein to their instincts is a repressed woman or man, locked up in their thoughts of guilt, unable to enjoy life. Impurity is presented to us as a synonym for freedom, authenticity, and normality. For this reason, wanting to live purity today is not only difficult, but also, at the eyes of this world in which we live, it seems to be stupid. Hence, the importance that we understand well what purity of heart is. Living with purity of heart is the triumph of love. Purity is an affirmation. Purity is not a code of conduct difficult to put up with. I try to live with purity of heart because I want to be free and I want to be happy. That's why I make an effort to live according to chastity. I don't stop drinking a glass of strawberry-flavored cyanide because it's forbidden. I don't drink it because it kills me. That's why people who love me Tell me it is better not to drink it. That's why it appears on the list of the Ten Commandments, which is the best list of commandments to be happy in this world, right? Look at what the Lord said in the Sermon of the Mountain. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Whoever gives up his purity of heart not only remains empty inside, but also becomes blind, does not see God in anything, does not perceive the things of the spirit because the animal man cannot grasp God. When I give free reign to my instincts, I lose God. And living as a good Christian starts being for me something not worth it. My broken heart stops seeing God and I turn away from him. Let's be honest. Young people do not stop following Jesus Christ because they have a problem with the dogma of the Holy Trinity, right? But if God has asked us to be clean and pure in heart, it is because the sin of impurity harms ourselves and others. When I corrupt myself, when I put images in my heart that I shouldn't, or use my body for personal enjoyment, I create in myself a weakness 
that makes me a slave to instinct. And I also lose the ability to reason. Let's face it. We live in an over-sexualized society that demands more and more intensity, more and more pleasure, new and new experiences. And that path only leads us to a fuller destruction, to an ever greater emptiness. And we end up thinking that the only way to feel good is to try new things. And we fall back again. And we keep making bigger our emptiness inside. This is the great truth that no one tells, but this is the reality. What we want to do instead is to love God with a pure heart. We want to say, yes, Lord, with your grace, I will be pure in heart and I shall see you. Lord, with your grace, I want to be one of these blessed people. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. We have been created according to God's image and likeness. So our heart is thirsty for good love. Believe it or not, deep down in our hearts, we have this good tendency towards this good love, this eternal love, this pure love. Let me explain this with an example. What do you prefer that someone tells you? A. I will love you for a while, then I will quit you. Or B, I love you today, and I will love you tomorrow, and every day of my life, and always, because you are the best person I have ever met, and I cannot live my life without you. And I love you today, and I will keep this love going all my life, because my life without you is nothing. What do you prefer? A or B? The answer is obvious, right? Because we have deep down in our hearts this great desire for good love. And that's exactly what we have to give to our hearts. A good love. True love. Holy purity plays an important role in this aspect you know, of our lives. Purity gives me the power to love that way. With a pure love, with a good love, with a true love. And that takes me away from the fake love, the bad love, that makes my heart to shrink and to get burned and to make it unable to, to love. <clears throat> so Lord, give me this heart. Um, purity is that virtue that gives us wings, you know, so that we can become givers rather than takers. Uh? The giver is the one who is sacrificing himself for God and for the person he loves, right? The taker is the one who is thinking of himself, thinking of himself. Uh? That selfishness is the, the beginning of the fake love. Whereas this generosity of the giver is the beginning of the highway towards true love, which is the highway we can go, we can, we can, we don't, we won't walk down, right? So Lord, give me this true love that it's in my heart, it's natural, but we need to fight for it because we have original sin and we have also the tendency towards the bad love. So Lord, give me your grace, your strength. <clears throat> so that I can keep my good desires of loving with a pure heart always high, with your grace. The Lord said <clears throat> in the gospel, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. That's exactly where our purity starts. It starts in our hearts. If you, Lord, are my treasure, if serving others and loving them for your sake is my treasure, then my heart will be there. Always thinking of you, always thinking of loving others with service, with self-giving. So Lord, give me this purity. There is this slogan that was uh, told in the Middle Ages, Ubi cor ivi oculum, right? Wherever your heart is, there your eye will be also, right? It's kind of um, the paraphrase what the Lord said in the Gospel, right? But that's so true. Wherever your heart is, then you will address your sight in that direction. That's why we need to fill our hearts with good love. When my heart is filled with good love, then my eyes, my actions, my everything goes in the right direction. So Lord, give me this pure heart. Um, give me a pure heart, give me your grace, Lord, to learn, to put my heart in you. Uh, San Jose Maria says, to be happy in this world, what you need is not an easy life, but a heart which is in love.
So Lord, give me this heart. Our holy purity starts there. When we ask our Lord for this pure heart. And now, as we do our prayer, <clears throat> we can ask the Lord for these graces. Because as San Jose Maria says as well in the way, purity is given by God when we ask for it with humility. So everything we do about asking the Lord for this purity is good for us. When we ask our Lord, when, when we get on our knees every night and we say these three Hail Marys to our Lady, asking for holy purity, that's a good means to grow in this virtue. Because this virtue grows not because we are supermen or superwomen, it grows in our hearts because we ask our Lord for it with humility. So Lord, give me this holy purity. In order to give good love to our hearts, so that we are going to be happy, because we are going to be loving properly, we need the virtue of generosity. Once and again, this is a, an important virtue. If we are generous with God, if we are generous with others, huh, regardless the sacrifice that it you know, takes, we will be on the right path towards this true love. Huh? True love is about doing what the other wants. True love is to do the will of the other, because I want to, right? I'm so in love with that person that I'm ready to do whatever this person wants, right? And it applies the same to God, right? In order to take that step, in order to love that way, we need this generosity. Generosity to do whatever God wants me to do, whatever those around me want me to do. Here is a... <clears throat> dialogue between a husband and a wife in a movie I saw a few years back and the husband who is not a cultured man is a man with just little literacy is going to be away for two months and his wife says the day they have to say goodbye the wife says I want you to write me a letter every chance you get and husband says I cannot write letters wife yes you can Husband, I cannot write. I told you. Wife, takes you five minutes. Promise me. Husband, it is embarrassing. They ain't going to be no good. Wife, it's a lot cheaper than calling long distance, Tony. Please, promise you are going to write. Husband, okay, I promise. That's how love works. As it turns out, the husband in this movie ends up enjoying writing letters thanks to a friend who helps him with the task. So the friend tells Tony, the protagonist, okay, Tony, tell me what you are writing. Tell me, Tony, what you are trying to say to her. And Tony says, I don't know. You know, how I miss her and that kind of stuff. And the friend says, okay, then say that, but do it in a manner that no one else has ever done it before. Like this. Dear Dolores, when I think of you, I am reminded of the beautiful plains of Alberta. The distance between us is breaking my spirit. My time and experiences without you are meaningless to me. Falling in love with you was the easiest thing I have ever done. Nothing matters to me but you. And every day I am alive, I am aware of this. I loved you every day since the day I met you. I love you today and I will love you the rest of my life. P.S. Kiss the kids. And that's the end of the letter. You know, it is possible to sacrifice ourselves for the person we love by doing what the person wants. Although it seems difficult, although it seems that we cannot do it, let us make an effort. That's the beginning of the virtue of generosity. For the person we love, we are ready to do whatever she wants, whatever he wants. And it works the same with God. We have to be ready to do for God whatever he wants us to do. Then we will be blessed because we shall see, she, <clears throat> excuse me, we will be blessed because we shall see God. 
we shall see God, of course, in the afterlife, but we shall see God right now, right here. And we shall see people right now, right here, with new eyes. Because that's what the virtue of Holy Purity gives us. New eyes to look at people with God's eyes. That's purity. We are so close to God. We are so trying to be close to Him that we end up seeing the world with, the, with, the, with His eyes. So Lord, give me your grace to learn this virtue of generosity because giving good love to our hearts has to do with this, to be generous. When we are generous, we are giving good love to our hearts. Then our hearts expand and grow and are happy huh? and are exposed to good stuff. That's what makes us capable of loving every day and being happy in this world and of course forever and of course in heaven. You know? Love is about that. It's about doing what the other wants us to do. So Lord, give me the grace <clears throat> to live according to this love. There are beautiful words that Pope Francis has told young people about holy purity. In one of the World Youth Days, Pope Francis said, quote, Youth is a time of life when your desire for a love which is genuine, beautiful and expansive begins to blossom in your hearts. How powerful is this ability to love and to be loved? My friends, do not let this, <clears throat> do not let this precious treasure be debased, destroyed or spoiled. That is what happens when we start to use our neighbors for our own selfish ends, even as objects of pleasure. Hearts are broken and sadness follows upon these negative experiences. I urge you, do not be afraid of true love, the love that Jesus teaches us and which St. Paul describes as patient and kind. Patient and kind. St. Paul says, love is not jealous or boastful. It is not arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrong, but rejoices in the right. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. This is the love that the Lord is promising us, to us. If we are close to Him, and if we love following God's plan, we cannot use people for our own pleasure. We cannot just use the internet for our own pleasure. That's not good, because it kills our love. It's not that the church is bad and the church bans, you know, what makes me to have a lot of fun. No, the church bans what is not going to make me happy. Yeah? So let us ask our Lord to always grow in these paths of holy purity in our personal lives. The Pope said, in encouraging you to rediscover the beauty of the human vocation to love, I also urge you to rebel against the widespread tendency to reduce love to something banal, reducing it to its sexual aspect alone, deprived of its essential characteristics of beauty, communion, fidelity, and responsibility. That's the thing, deep. <clears throat> Excuse me. That is the thing. Love is something deep. It's not something just to play with. It's not just something superficial, you know? Just the sexual aspect, you know, and to have fun. And... No. Love is you know, it's beautiful. There is communion, fidelity between the spouses, responsibility. And that's an adventure that lasts forever. Mm -hmm. huh? So when we reduce love to the bad use of our sexuality, etc., well, we are cutting, we are preventing us from enjoying the real vocation to love. So Lord, again, give me your grace to be prudent and to be strong, to love with purity. And Pope Francis said, they say that it is not worth making a lifelong commitment, making a definitive decision forever, because we don't know what tomorrow will bring. That's what our culture says, right? But the Pope says, I ask you, dear young people, instead to be revolutionaries. 
I asked you to swim against the tide. Yes, I'm asking you to be a rebel against this culture that sees everything as temporary and that ultimately believes you are incapable of responsibility, that believes you are incapable of true love. You see, those words of the Pope are amazing, you know? Lord, give me your grace to swim against the tide. When everybody thinks and believes and behaves according to a bad understanding of love, Lord, I want to be revolutionary. I want to swim against the tide to do what you want me to do. I want to rebel, Lord, against this culture that sees everything as temporary and that ultimately believes I am incapable of responsibility. Lord, give me a grace to, to be part of this good revolution of good love, the revolution of the true love. Um, the Pope finished those words by saying, I have confidence in you and I pray for you. Have the courage to swim against the tide and also have the courage to be happy. Because that's the thing. When you don't swim against the tide and you just go down with the stream, then you are not happy. It is when you swim against the tide that you are happy. So Lord, give me this true love. And true love is not something that can be imposed. True love is not something that you improvise in one day. It only remains to conquer it. So let us ask our Lord to help us to work out the means so that we can become people who love properly. Let us ask our Lord to help us to work on these means, because there are means to become people who live according to chastity and according to the holy purity. Yeah? This is not impossible. Yeah? And here is the first means. The means to win in this virtue, okay, yeah, are very various, but the first one is very simple. Yes, to want. Yes, to want. Do I want to live according to purity? Do I really want to live according to chastity? Am I ready to do whatever it takes to live according to it? Yes, that's the first mean. To want. Do you want? Do I want? Do you really want? Do I really want? You know, then with the grace of God, I will make it. So if I really want, and I ask the Lord for grace, I will make it to be a person who loves with this pure heart. Because sin is less powerful than God. God is more powerful than sin, right? God's grace is more powerful than any challenge that we face in adolescence, right? What is invincible for God is to help you if your will and your heart do not want to do it. When we decide not to do it, then we are tying you know, uh, God's hands. That's why if we want to conquer this true love, the first means is that, to be willing to do it, to want to do it. And this happens in our prayer when we say to the Lord, Lord, I want to do it. With your grace, I'm ready to do whatever it takes to live according to this love. With your grace. And then the Lord will give us the grace we need. Other means that <clears throat> we can work on to be chaste and free are the following, of course, life of prayer, right? If we ask the Lord in our prayer, if we ask the Lord for grace in prayer, He will give it to us. Huh? Other thing we can do is to say the rosary every day while walking down the street, in the sea train, in the streetcar, in the bus, whenever, wherever, whenever. We can say the rosary with lots of love. It takes 17 minutes. 17 minutes and a half, maybe. But, you know, it's something easy. Uh, and when we invoke our, ma our mother's name, the devil runs away. We are untouchable if we are close to our mother Mary. Plus, we have this scapular of Our Lady of Mount Carmel that we can, you know, when we hear that it's hanging in our necks, you know, because it makes this noise, you know, this chain, well, ask Our Lady for purity. Other means we can work on is to receive the sacraments often, right? Especially communion and confession. When we go to confession often, we receive an increase of sanctifying grace. And that grace makes us strong. And when we receive the Lord communion again, the devil cannot do anything against us because we are super close to God. So that's the solution. The grace we receive in the sacraments. Of course, one of the means is to be sincere with yourself and with your spiritual director. You know, in the temptations you face, etc. You know, before problems come, you bring up temptations, and so that you can be helped. Huh? 
and sincerity with ourselves, you know. First of all, deep down in our hearts, we gotta realize maybe that we are in a location of sin, so we have to bring it up in a spiritual direction just to to work on the remedy and the solution, right? That's super important. You know? And then we will get rid of those things we don't really like, but we are already hooked onto maybe. So that's the thing. Sincerity sets us free. Eh? Sincerity breaks the chains, breaks the ties that tie us down to the ground. Eh? So let's be sincere with ourselves, with the spiritual director. Then, of course, small mortifications, right? <clears throat> small mortifications are super important. So do not lay in the couch, roll out of your bed right after the alarm clock goes off or your mother wakes you up. Do your homework first, fun after, <laughs> and make sure it's good fun, you know? Playing with friends, reading good books, learning to play a musical instrument, you know? Not just fun scrolling down forever, yeah. your feet on the Instagram, right? Because that's not good fun. And that's going to bring you to bad stuff, right? So small mortifications, okay? temperance in the use of social media. Screen time is going to be short in our days. Huh? we got to spend time talking to people face to face, having fun in person, being social in person, eh? building up true friendships. Asking our lady for help when temptations come. Eh? A good one is to learn and practice the so-called tomorrow principle, which goes as follows. If I eat these three sweet, delicious and attractive chocolate cakes now, tomorrow I'll be throwing up all day long, right? So is that worth it? The answer is no. So that applies to falling into sin. So fight your temptations because how are you going to feel later? You're going to feel terribly. So fight against the temptation. Keep the custody of your eyes on the street, on the internet. That's another good thing to do if you want to grow in holy purity. Set boundaries in your dealings with people of the opposite sex. Keep the custody, custody of your heart as well. Eh? And again, these small sacrifices eh, throughout the day. Sacrifices that allow us to fulfill the plan of life, right? So when you are supposed to be praying, when you're supposed to be studying, sacrifice yourself to be studying and to be praying. That sacrifice makes your heart strong and raises your heart towards God, not towards yourself, right? Mortifications at work, stay focused, you know? Do first, tackle first what is more difficult. Eh? Finish off your work taking care of little things. Put some order in your desk. Eh? Then mortifications at table. Eat less of those things you like the most, right? That's the thing. The mortification of finishing things with the same joy you had when you started out, right? The, mo the mortification of putting on a smile. You know, mortification in my priorities. The Lord's gonna go first. I have to go after. Huh? The Lord's gonna go first. Others gotta go first. I go after. All of this makes my heart strong, makes my heart free from attachment to fake love. And of course, the most important, one of the most important means for us to live according to chastity and holy purity is Our Lady, and devotion to Our Lady. If you foster in your spiritual life a strong devotion to Our Lady every day, you will be okay in this area and you will be super happy. And we have mentioned before these three Hail Marys before you go to bed. Also, you can say a few or a short prayer as you wake up in the morning. Uh, our mother is the mother of the church. The Lord told her, behold your son. That means take care of them. Help them to be you know, children of the new creation. The new creation that the Lord has begun in the cross and in his resurrection. Uh, to live according to sanctifying grace. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. It's the most beautiful, beautiful thing we can do in the world, but we need help. We need our mother. And our mother is there. The Lord gave us our mother to help us in all these aspects. So let us turn to our mother in temptation. Let us increase our devotion to her. And our mother will help us. Our Lady, Mother of Fair Love, pray for us. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. 
my Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.